expecting every Christmas song, even though I'd like to. Uh, Christmas sermons would have to be like five minutes uh, each, which probably wouldn't mind that. But uh, we can't. But right now, me and Josh are going to try through as many Christmas songs as we can in the next five and a half minutes. It's the most wonderful time of the year With those kids jingle belling And everyone telling you be of good cheer It's the most wonderful time of the year I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Sidewalks dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. And on every street corner, you'll hear sleigh bells ring. I listen in the lane. Snow is missing. Beautiful sight, we're happy tonight, walking in a winter wonderland. Dashing through the snow, and one horse open sleigh, oh, the fields we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> Bells and bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Only a hippopotamus will do No crocodiles, no rhinoceroses I only like hippopotamuses And hippopotamus like me too Have a blue Christmas without you I'll be so blue just thinking about you Decorations of red on a green Christmas tree won't be the same, dear, if you're not here with me. Oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Wish you a Merry Christmas. Wish you a Merry Christmas. Wish you a Merry Christmas. Santa Claus, he comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He'll come around when the time rings out at Christmas morning. Have a holly jolly Christmas, it's the best time of the year. And I don't know if there'll be snow, but have a cup of cheer. Have a holly jolly Christmas, and when you walk down the street, say hello to friends you know or everyone you meet last christmas i gave you my heart but the very next day you gave it away this year to save me from tears i give it to someone special last christmas i gave you my heart but the Someone special. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. While the merry bells keep ringing. Happy holidays to you. The weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. The Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. Mistletoe hung where you can see every drunk who tries to stop. Rocking around the Christmas tree at the spirit we bring. Later we'll have some pumpkin pie and we'll do some caroling. The least Navidad. The least Navidad. 
Feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. Sing it with us now. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. In one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? I'll be home for Christmas. You can plan on me. The leaves have snow. Christmas Day, that's the island green that was sent to you from a land where palm trees sway. And here we know that Christmas will be green and bright. The sun will shine all day and all the stars at night. And is a wise way to say Merry Christmas to you. Have yourself a Your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Grandma got run over by a reindeer, walking home from our house Christmas Eve. You can say there's no such thing as Santa. As for me and Grandpa, we believe. And so I'm offering a simple phrase to kids from, from 1 to 92. Sing it with us. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Christmas, you guys. Hey there. We would like to welcome you to First Baptist Church. We are thrilled you've joined us. Every week, people of First Baptist are active throughout our community. Don't be shy. We would love for you to come with us, so let's get connected. We invite you to fill out a Connect card. If you're new at First, we hope you'll use the Connect card to let us know more about you and find out more about us. With the Connect card, you can request more information or let us know ways we can pray for you. When finished, drop it in the offering or take it to the Welcome Center. Come and celebrate a First Family Christmas tradition. Experience incredible music by candlelight and the remarkable story of the great of God wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Every family that attends will receive a special Christmas gift, the 2019 First Baptist Owasso Christmas Ornament. This is all happening December 24th. Check the bulletin for times at both campuses. For every believer, the Word of God is the rule of faith and Christian practice. The ability to read, interpret, apply, and submit to the Word of God is of immeasurable worth. Led by Pastor Chris Wall and Rob Lewis, this four-week class will feature a powerful five-step process for understanding and applying God's Word. Journey into the Word of God, Wednesdays, 6 p.m., January 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th in the Education Center of the Owasso Campus. Something powerful happens when the people of God move forward together with a single purpose. Huddle is the place our entire church family comes together to be inspired, encouraged, and informed. Pastor Chris Wall will reveal the vision God has placed on his heart for the Gospel Challenge. Through individual breakouts, we will discuss ways to bring this vision to life in our specific areas of ministry. Dinner will be served. Child care for birth through fifth grade is available by reservation at fbcawasso.org slash events. It all happens Sunday, January 12th, 6 to 8 p.m. on the Owasso campus. This night is for everyone. 
During the month of December, you can designate a financial gift to World Missions on an FBCO tithe envelope. Your generous contribution supports missions and missionaries here, there, and everywhere through the Lottie Moon, Annie Armstrong, and Edna McMillan Ministries. Thank you for supporting missions around the world. In just a moment, as an act of worship, we'll have an opportunity to give again. You can give online at fbcowasso.org slash give by texting any amount to 84321 or even during our services. We're praying that God will continue to mature our church financially. That's not about more. It's about every individual honoring God by giving generously, saving wisely, and living appropriately. It's an honor that we get to do this together. Amen. We're glad you're here. Hope you uh, join us as we uh, as we sing to the Lord this morning.
My name is Andy Ankew, and I've just been a member of this church just for a very short bit. But I'm here today because my daughter wants to get baptized. And I want to thank you for the life and ministry of this church because it made a difference in the life of my daughter, and that's why she's going through this act of obedience today. She became a Christian at uh, Falls Creek a few years ago, but she finally found a place where she feels connected and comfortable. And so, Abby, since you've made your profession of faith, I baptize you now, my daughter, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Buried to the old way of life, risen to a new life in Christ. Amen. What a, what a way to celebrate as a church in this time of year. We're going to do something really awkward right now. And I know if you know me, you know awkward. Um, but what I want to do is I want to some, spend some time just praying, maybe like 30 seconds. Because in the craziness of what's happening this time of year, I still know that you have bills to pay. You still have to go to work tomorrow. You still have all this stuff. You have to go meet relatives you hadn't seen in 10 years and you really don't like. Or you see your brother and sister that you just want to beat up all the time. But you have all this stress in your life that's coming up in the next few days. But let me just remind you that uh, we have the Prince of Peace who is on our side. That when God brought salvation, the Prince of Peace said, I, I give it all to you. This is This is yours. But sometimes we get so focused, and my pastor's going to preach about it in a minute, on ourselves. 
And we forget this time of season isn't about the presents or the gifts or the eating or the families. It's about Jesus and what he's done for us. And this is when we celebrate this. So let's spend the next 30 seconds just praying, and I'll close this. And I want you to pray for the, everyone around you, just that they'll have a peace during this time of year. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus that everyone in this room and on this campus, Father God, over the next few days and weeks, God, this, the stresses of this world may come, but God, I pray that your peace, which transcends all understanding, will guide us. And Father God, we're not going to get so overwhelmed by getting the last present or making the last meal that we forget what this time of year is about. And that's what we're celebrating when salvation came salvation that the redeemer of the world redeemed his children and we celebrate this father God. and lord you did it in ways that the world will never understand that you did it through a baby so it's fragile lord i pray for peace in this room and as they go home and over the next few days and weeks we'll focus our attention on you jesus and you'll be glorified Come and move, God, as we worship you, as we worship you, Lord. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. Let us sing and let us worship the Lord this morning. We're going to sing this part that says, let us open up to receive our King. May our hearts be prepared and may we make room so we become less and he becomes greater. Let us open up. Let us open up. Let us open up, yeah. Let us open up to receive our King, yes. Let us open up, yeah. Let us open up all that the desires of this world may leave. Let us seek our King this morning and receive Him. Let us open up, yeah. Let us open up. So open up to receive our King. Let's sing this out, joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Yeah, let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare.
nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and hell and nature sing. May we open up. Let's focus our attention right over here. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Cornelius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was a house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over the flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host words in God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pound, pounding them into her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Amen. Let's give a shout of praise this morning. I don't know if I've ever heard scripture read like that before. I love it. Thank you, guys. The herald angels sing glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled, joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem and hark the herald angels sing in glory to the new Christ the everlasting Lord, 
this room prepare the way. God, may all the distractions leave the room as we open up our hearts for your word and your truth to come alive in us this morning. 
God, this morning, overwhelm us with who you are, God. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that our hearts are open to receive our King. The salvation has come. God, may we receive it, Father. Lord Jesus, with outstretched arms and open hearts, Father. God, we, de we declare that, God, we need you. In the craziness of this world, God, we need you. And you're worth it. Because we need you, God, don't let us be quiet and sit on the sidelines of the game anymore. God, put us in the game that we can be active in sharing your truth of the gospel that changes everything. Just like when Jesus came into the world, it changed history. But Father God, when you, when we accept you as Lord and Savior, God, you change us. That we are a new creation. The old is God and the new has come. Because God made him who knew no sin to become our sin so that we can become the righteousness of God in him. So, Father, this morning, as we dive into your word and your truth, overwhelm us, Father. And lead us to action. I love you, Lord. Come and move in a mighty way. Come and move in a powerful way this morning. We love you, Lord, and praise you. I ask all these things. In the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Well, I, I, I loved our songs today. I loved uh, the drums. I told Joe, I said, man, I, I think I can finally have Christmas because the, the drums came out. And it's, my, it's by far my favorite. But what was cool about today is we got to see a next generation of drummers. Uh, you know, it, it's a little, in the first service, my wife and I were sitting there just reminiscing how it was our son that used to be up here. Our, we were sitting by the McCormicks, and their son, they used to be the drummer boys. And uh, now we have a new generation because ours have gone to college, and we're, we're still crying about that, but we'll get over it, I think. Um, but um, but I, I love this series and the songs of the season because there's so many incredible Christmas songs. Now, what we've been doing as we've opened up the, the Word is not necessarily looking at those Christmas songs that are like sentimental to us, but, but looking at the songs that were written in the Word of God. Because when, when Jesus came, songs were written. Uh, like Mary sang a song, and we looked at that a couple weeks ago, that Mary's song is the Magnificat, how, how she said so many things about God. Then Zachariah sang a song. It was so amazing when, when Zachariah uh, burst forth this song after he couldn't speak for months. And, and this morning, we're going to look at the angel song. The angels sang a song, came to, into this earth and sang a song, and, and it says so much about God. Uh, I hope you come on Christmas Eve because it's a, it's a, uh, a blessing to, to be a part of our Christmas Eve services, and, and I hope you pick one of those to come because we're going to look at Simeon's song, and, and that, if you have a family member that, doesn't, that they don't know the Lord, that's a, it's a phenomenal time to come and engage with them in a conversation about, about Jesus and salvation that came. Because on Christmas Eve, we're going to look at Simeon's song. But, but, you know, Christmas is a special time. And, and I, love, I love Christmas. I think back about the Christmases that we've had that, that have been very special. There, there are a lot that come to my mind, several that come to my mind. But one of the most special Christmases that we had as a family was when our family was apart from one another. Uh, many of you know Paul Purifoy. He's, he's our senior adult minister here at our church. And, and, uh, and Paul is uh, not only just the greatest senior adult minister in America, um, but he's also my father-in-law. And, um, and years ago, in 1999, Paul was sick. And we didn't know what was going on. And we were praying and we were concerned and we were not knowing what was happening. The doctors couldn't diagnose it. And I don't know if you've ever, many of you probably have, been in that moment when you're 
meeting with a doctor and they can't figure out what's going on. That's kind of where we were. And, um, and one of our uncles, Brack Hatler, who has gone to be with the Lord now, but Brack at that time was, uh, he, he was an incredible surgeon. He was the, one of the top surgeons in Pittsburgh at the University of Pittsburgh. And, um, and he was a heart surgeon and, and just an f- incredible doctor and incredibly smart. And, and we were at a family wedding. And he walks in the door and he looks at Paul, just by looking at him at a wedding, said, I think you have hemochromatosis, which is a, a rare disease of the blood. And, and, and he diagnosed him at, at a wedding. And then... It was crazy. He goes, you got to come to Pittsburgh. So they, at Christmas time, they flew to Pittsburgh to start these tests. And, and sure enough, they're about to get on a plane to come back to be here for Christmas Day. And they called them at the airport and said, get back to the hospital. Brack was right. You have hemochromatosis. Get back here. And so that Christmas, we were, we were apart. But we were thanking the Lord for the answers that we've been praying for. And, and, and you know... As I think about that time, um, it, was, it was meaningful. And, and I was amazed how God used an observant doctor. Brock was just an, one of those doctors. Doctors are just observant. They just can tell, they pay attention to the details. And that's a great doctor. Well, Luke was a doctor. Luke is the one that wrote the book of Luke and the, and the book of Acts, and God inspired him, and, and he was perfectly suited to, to fulfill this ta- task. Look at Luke chapter 1 with me, real quick. Let's look over at Luke chapter 1, verse 1. I want you to see this. It's very important. In Luke 1, 1, Dr. Luke, this observant um, leader who uh, pays attention to the details, it says this, many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. So these things were fulfilled in their presence, just as they were handed down to us by those who were the first eyewitnesses and servants of the word. So so what Luke is doing is he is writing down this account from eyewitnesses. Now that's important. That's really important. Because what we have in the book of Luke is not some... Uh, story like we see on Disney Plus or some uh, fairy tale that's been made up. No, Luke is, is interviewing people and connecting the details and, and, and he's meeting with eyewitnesses, people that saw it. So what, what happens with the, the message of Christ, it, it moves from this story that just kind of is sentimental to us from the pages of just a story to a moment in time, a moment in history. Now, that's what Luke's doing. He's interviewing eyewitnesses. And, he's, and, he, and with this in mind, verse 3 says, Since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus. So he's writing to Theophilus. He's like, look, this is an orderly account. And, and this is what Luke is doing. And, 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 and this is important because, because Christ came at a moment in time. He invaded history, our history, our world. And Luke is, is meeting with people saying, hey, tell me about that moment. I'm going to write it down. And his, uh, this observant doctor who catches the details blessed us. God used him to bless us to know the details. So he writes in Luke chapter 2, verse 1. We've already heard it read, but in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. Now, we know this story. We know this. It's a remarkable story. It's, a, it's an unlikely story. I mean, it's interesting. It's, these shepherds are there. I mean, shepherds are not important people. 
They're actually outcast. I mean, it's crazy to me that, that Jesus would go to shepherds first. It makes, it's, it's kind of, it's one of those moments where, where truth is better than fiction, right? I mean, you've seen that. You're like, this really happened. You can't make this stuff up. And Luke is interviewing these, these, these people that are saying, yeah, I was there. I knew the shepherds. He was my cousin or whatever, you know. He, he knew them. They saw it. They watched it. They, 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 they knew Mary. They knew these things. And it's a, it's a, an amazing story that Mary is about to give birth to the Messiah. And, it, and it's, the law required them to take that road to Bethlehem. And, you know, it's, it's tough because Mary's out of her normal, she's not, not at her home. I, I know about, and we had three babies in our house, and, and my wife was like, I want to go home. You know, I want to go home. And, and she's out of her accommodations, and, and it's a, remarkable story. They're, they're trying to find a place to go. And, and, and it's interesting because the, um, uh, um, you know, the, uh, verse 8. Look at verse 8. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they, and they were terrified. So, so think about that. I mean, this, this shepherds, they're just out doing their job, and all of a sudden, an angel appears, and the glory of the Lord is around them. Now, the first point is obvious, but, but, I, but I think it's an important point to make, especially in our modern society. I mean, we're so sophisticated, aren't we? I mean, we have internet. I mean, Eric was, my kids were blown away. They were like, Dad, you mean you... You were out of college before you ever sent your first email? I'm like, yes. Wow, it's crazy. I told them I used to have a pager. Anybody ever used to have a pager? I mean, yeah, you, it was awesome. Man, I had a pager. Man, it was, it was awesome. It felt so cool. And, and, you know, it's interesting. These, this is, we're sophisticated But point number one is so important, and it's this. Angels really exist. Now think about that. Angels exist. Angels and demons are not figurative references in Scripture. You need to know that. Angels exist. We we live in this world where where we we get nervous about the supernatural. But but you've got to recognize that there's more to life than just the physical world that we see. And that's a reality. The Bible's clear on this. Angels are real beings with specific jobs to accomplish. This is what angels, who angels are. And they really exist. And, and the Bible indicates this. It's interesting. And I want to try to unpack this just for a couple of minutes. So I'm going to give you a couple of references. So you, if you're going to take notes, you might have to write them fast. But, but, but we know that the earth, in Genesis 1-1, the earth was formless and void. And... and and it seems that the scripture is clear that, that angels were created in that moment between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2. Because the Bible speaks of, of, of it's kind of interesting, it's, it's, uh, the earth was formless and then the earth is made. But, but we, we know that by Genesis 3, Satan has entered the scene and he's on the earth. And, and so angels and were obviously created in that, in that time frame. And when you think about angels, well, what are they like? We know that a third of them rebelled against God. Scripture speaks to this. And, and, and angels, they, they were created by God, but it's interesting that they were, they were given a will, and many of them chose to rebel against, against the Lord. We know about angels, Luke 20 talks about this, 34 through 36. Angels, do, they, they don't age and they don't die. And this is an indication in that passage. Angels are, are limited in space. Now, now, we need to understand this because uh, angels are not like God. They're not omnipresent. Like right now, um, uh, one of my, two of my buddies I, I pray for often, uh, Russell Kirkpatrick is a pastor in Kansas. And I sent him a text today. He said, hey, man, I'm praying for you today as you preach. And Justin Beatles is a good friend of mine in, in, in Stillwater. 
a countryside, and I pray for him often. I send him a text. Man, I'm praying for you today. Because right now, as we are in this room, God's Spirit is here, and he's speaking. And, and at the same time, those guys are preaching in different parts of, the, of our state and, and all over the world, and God's Spirit is there speaking because God is omnipresent. Satan's not like that. you got to know that. Satan is one being. Now, Satan is organized, and his, his strategy is well organized. A third of the angels rebelled against him, against the Lord, and, and that's a lot because the angels are innumerable, according to Revelation. It's thousands upon thousands, it says. But, but we got to understand that Satan is not like God. He's one being. I've probably never encountered Satan himself because he's just one being. So let's not give him more credit than he has. Angels are more powerfully physically than people. They're, they're more powerful than I am. You know, we see this in Matthew 28. The angel rolled back the stone. You know, that was not possible probably for a man by himself. You see in uh, Daniel 6, the angels shut the mouths of the lions. It's cool. Second Peter 2.11 talks about how they're stronger and more powerful than us. Stra- uh, uh, they're, they're intelligent creatures who can communicate. We know this from Scripture. You know, they're aware of history, sometimes aware of future events in history. We saw this in Luke 1 when Zechariah meets with Gabriel and he says, hey, this is going to happen. This angel had a message from God. Angels' uh, appearance is usually invisible, but, but they have the ability to appear, to appear sometimes. 2 Kings 6 says this, they can appear at times. Uh, the word angel actually means messenger. That's what it means. And, 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 the, and, and they minister in worship and service to the Lord, like Isaiah 6. Oh, my goodness, that's a beautiful passage in Isaiah 6 where the angel, angelic creatures are, are singing and praising, and, and they're praising so loudly that, that the temple is filled with smoke and it's shaking. It's cool. But they worship and they serve the Lord. Angels are used to execute God's judgment and purposes. And there are times that God's going to use an angel to execute his judgment. I mean, think about this. When Jesus was on the cross, can you imagine that? Can you imagine the spiritual picture of Jesus on the cross? They, they, knowing that he could call 10,000 angels at any moment, and I can just picture 10,000 angels lined up as that Roman soldier walks up to Jesus and just like, boom. Going, Jesus, I'll, I'll take him. I got him. I got that guy. You know, I'm, I guarantee you, they would literally come and put the fear of God in those Roman soldiers. But amazingly, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't call those angels. He went to the cross for us. Angels, though, were involved in every aspect of, of Jesus' time on the earth. Angels also minister to believers. We see this in Hebrews 1. These ministering spirits who help us and protect us, and, and God uses. You know that um, Luke 16 indicates that, that angels are with us when we die. Angels are present in the death of his servants. It's interesting. Now, when you think about angels, how, how do you respond to an angel? If you ever see an angel, you need to respond like John does in, in Revelation 22, John falls down in Revelation 22 and in the presence of an angel, and he starts to worship. What does the angel say? Get up, man. You don't worship me. No, get up. We worship God. We, there's only one that we worship, and it's him alone. Now, now that's why we look at verse 9. Look at this. Luke chapter 2, verse 9. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. Now think about this moment, these shepherds, and, and, and the, the angel of the Lord appeared, and the glory was around them. The glory of the Lord, what does it point to? The glory of the Lord points to, the, to God's supreme authority. That's what the glory of the Lord points to. God is, God is in authority. And, and these angels, as they're there, the, the glory of the Lord's around them. And, and, and of course they were like convinced, hey, there's none like him. And folks, let me tell you something. There is none like the Lord. How can we serve someone else? How can we serve our own selves or our own lives, our own uh, uh, efforts, our own gods that we create? There's none like him. 
uh, I think we're going to put a picture up. Uh, uh, there's a picture up I want you to see. And this is Robin and I. Um, we're standing on Mount Carmel. You know, this, we went to Israel a couple of, of, about a year and a half ago. We're going to go back again a year from this time. We're going to go back to Israel with our church. But, but we're on Mount Carmel. 1 Kings 18 tells the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And, and as Elijah is standing on that mountain, and, and I love Elijah. I can't wait to get to heaven and go, dude, I love high five on that. Because he's smart aleck. And I love that. He's just he's talking trash to the prophets of Baal. They're, they're standing there. They're, they're cutting themselves, and they're dancing around to, to, the, to, to Baal. And, and, and Elijah stands up. He's like, hey, hey shout, shout a little louder. Maybe, maybe Baal's going to the bathroom. Yeah, come on, speak up. And then all of a sudden he goes, all right, you're done. You've been on all this time, and Baal's done nothing. He dumps water all over the altar, calls out to God, and God comes down from heaven with fire and laps up everything. It was like a moment, a showdown of God showing that he's the king of all kings. And I got to say to us, look, there's no one like God. No one like him. And, and, and this is why these shepherds are out in the field and, and, the, and the angels show up and the glory of the Lord is around them. Oh, my goodness. We can't worship Muhammad, a man. We're not going to worship wisdom of, of man, philosophies, Confucius, all these ancient philosophies, Buddha, these people that are just normal and live. No, we worship God, who's the king of all kings, who came in this miraculous way. See, the glory of the Lord points to God's supreme authority. This week in my quiet time, I, was, I just was struck by Job, chapter 38, that says this. Job writes in verse 4 through 7, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This is when the angels started singing. And, 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 and Job is saying, look, there's no one like God. And the shepherds, I guarantee you, they were convinced. They were like, okay, look, Lord. There's none like you. And I, I pray we see that. Because sometimes we worship these, this God of materialism or the God of, of successes, these earthly things we put in the place of God. And this is why I pray we can really sing that song that we sang right before I got up to preach to say, Lord, I surrender all to you. And I don't want you to come and miss the fact that the glory of the Lord ushered in the kingdom of God, of Jesus, to the earth. And, and you know, look at the song that they sang. Verse 10. This, this is one of those songs that, that, that starts with the buildup. Like, like, it's like I picture like Joe when, when he starts like talking and, and, and like that beard starts bouncing. And man, I, I just like the music's playing and I'm like getting motivated. And he starts giving that little, little pep talk. That's what the angels did. The, the glory of the Lord is around them and, and they start talking. And what does he say? Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all. All people. Think about that. Point number two is this. This announcement is for all people. Oh, my goodness. You and me. Undeserving people that come can come to Jesus. Salvation is this invitation to all. And that's why I want you to know you can't save yourself. One time I was met a lady who grew up in the Mormon church, and if you, if you study Mormon theology, it's a works-based theology. You've got to earn your way. I remember sitting down with her and talking about the gospel, and, and, and just the, you could see on her face as, as we opened the scriptures, and, and when I got to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for it's by grace that you're saved through faith, not by works. She's like, you mean, you, she stopped me. You mean I, don't, I can't earn this? I don't know. It was like, she was like, wow, I, I, I've been trying and I can't. 
Well, you can't. That's why Jesus came. He came. Salvation is this invitation to, to faith in Christ. Look at verse 11. And the, the angel said, For unto you this day in the city of David, for, excuse me, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. Okay, that'd be like me saying, hey, I want you to go to the nursery over here, and in this room over here, you're going to find a baby in a diaper. You'd be like, all right. There's like nine of them. Or I don't know how many are in there, a bunch. There's a lot of diapers in there. There's a bunch of diapers in there. You'd be like, okay. You'll find a baby in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. All right, that's different. All right. We can probably find that kid. And they do. Verse 13. Think about this. And suddenly, there was with the angel. Okay, suddenly. Have you ever had something happen suddenly? I mean, I mean, like you, you're like, ah, suddenly. I mean, that's what it was. Uh, best I got is when I walked in, I was newly married. I walked in the house and, and I jumped across the corner and said, hey, Robin. And she goes, oh, she started crying. She's just scared to death. She thought someone was breaking in the house. It was sudden. Scared her. They were scared. This was suddenly. Like, whoa. A multitude. I did a study on that word. You know what multitude means? A lot. A bunch. A multitude of heavenly hosts. Think about this. These guys weren't convinced and they were convinced, excuse me, they were convinced that there was more to life than physical. You know why? Because they saw a multitude of angels, heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. Think about that. Glory to God in the highest. Now, we gotta, we got to hear that. we got to know that today, that, that the God we serve, the God we are worshiping is the highest. There is none like him. He's the only one that can, has the power to speak his, with his mouth and the world is created. He's the only one who has the power to lay the foundations of the earth and form the stars in, our, in the sky. The, the amazing, I mean, today it was beautiful. I got up this morning. On this foggy day, is it still foggy? I don't know if it's still foggy outside. But, but when I got up this morning to, to go run in my neighborhood, I thought, oh, man, it was just so fresh and refreshing. And I was like, wow, Lord, thank you for this beautiful, foggy morning. He made that. He created it. He's the only one. That's why the angel said, glory to God in the highest. And this is why there must be no other gods before him. This is why the only response to him is, Lord, I look to you and surrender all to you. I surrender all. Glory to God in the highest. And look at this, and on earth, peace among those whom he has pleased. Man, it blows my mind. You know, it, it, I've just been wrestling with this truth. Glory to God in the highest. That God himself entered Humanity is a missionary to us. Think about that. He's a missionary to us. He came here as a missionary, seeking you and me, coming for us, coming to, to deliver this news, this message of salvation, that, that God acted, God himself acted as a missionary because he loves you, he cares for you. And he came. And the miracle of Jesus being fully God and fully man at the same time is, is mind-blowing. That, that this Mary, she, she is visited by this angel, and she said, he said, uh, you're going to have a son. She's like, how can I do this? I'm a, I'm a virgin. How can I do this? Well, the well, Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, the angel said, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and this child will be called holy. And you know, it took Jesus coming in a miraculous way. The only way he could be holy is that, is that he had no earthly father. 
He was born in a natural process, but, but it was unnatural because he had no earthly dad. And it was uh, this conception that was miraculous. And, and you know that all babies are cute. We had a baby born in our church th- this week. And, and we, we, we love the noise they make. We love it, right? Right now. It's great. That's life. It's like fun. You don't have to go. You can stay. I love it. But it's life. And Jesus made those noises and called those things out and interrupted people. And it's, it's life and it's what Jesus did. But see, he had no earthly dad. And he came, and the only way he was called holy is because he was different than every other baby. When Jesus came into the world, he was fully God and fully man. It's a miracle. And then the angel saying, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Peace. That's what they said, peace. Man, isn't it crazy that we live in a world with such torment, turmoil, confusion, but God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, I think back of that time, that Christmas when our family was apart. We're like, Lord, we don't know what's going on. God intervened with Uncle Brock, and and we we had more Christmases. We have more Christmases now because of a doctor wrote down the details, figured out the details. But you know, I met with somebody this week and looked at me and said, you know what, I think this will be my last Christmas. I think they're right. But you know what, the truth is, God is faithful when there's healing and we have more Christmases. God is faithful when it's our last Christmas. And folks, there's peace in the world. And I think about point three is this, the real peace is now available to a world in turmoil. I don't have to convince you that we live in a world that is in turmoil. Goodness, I've never seen anything like it. In all of my years, I've never seen a world so divided as what I see right now. I've never seen our country so divided in what we are right now. I've never, I've had more conversations about hopelessness. But we got to understand, our hope is not in our governmental system. Our hope is not in our health care. Our hope is not in our economy. Our hope is in Jesus. That's where peace is. And what's amazing right now is I look around the world, all over the world, guess what's happening as, as, as the, this message of Jesus coming and, and this announcement that, that a Savior was born to you. He's Christ the Lord. And that message is continuing to go all over the world. And guess what? We're seeing people hear that message. And in countries like Iran, who when we listen to our news, those are our enemies. But we have brothers and sisters in Iran because the church is growing in Iran. In China, oh, they're our enemy. Hey, look, the church is growing in China. The church is growing in Asia and in, in Africa all over the world, South America, Central America, Middle East, Europe. And folks, let me tell you something. Real peace is possible. It's available to a world that's in turmoil. Where is peace found? Peace is found in the presence of God. See, Jesus came and He allows you to know him 
And these angels so, sang a song. Glory to God in the highest. Peace is found in a relationship with Jesus. Peace is experienced as you know the plan of God. Oh, I want you to know the plan of God. The plan of God is to come for you, to save you, to teach you, to lead you. And you see, peace is confirmed the moment you trust God. It's confirmed in trusting God. Peace is, is trusting the Lord. And, and you know what? You can trust the Lord in, when God gives you more Christmases. You can trust the Lord when you have no more Christmases to experience. My, my prayer for us is we recognize glory to God in the highest. There's none like him. That's why, as Joe comes, we're going to end with that song. I surrender all. And it's my prayer for you that this Christmas you can say, you, you, are, you can walk out this door knowing that you're completely surrendered to the Lord. Ah, oh, you need him. And he came for you. Would you follow him? Don't you see him? Don't you see that, that he's the only way? There's no one like him. Glory to God in the highest. And peace on your earth. On earth. Come to him. Would you stand where you are? And as you stand, I, I want to tell you, there's several ways to respond today. You could come down and several of our staff are going to be down front. You could come and talk to us and we'd love to pray with you and talk with you and help you. Um, you may want to pray with somebody and you may want to just come and get on your knees. Grab your friend and come and pray. And this is a safe place. This is a place that we all understand we need the Lord. So nobody's going to think, that, oh, man, that, I wonder what's going on there. No, look, we all need the Lord. We need him. We're not shy about that. Maybe you need Christ and you don't want to come and talk to us. I get that. You know there's tables in the back or out in the foyer. There's people at those. I mean, you could walk up to one of those people at those little tables and Say, hey, God's speaking to me. Could you t help me? Man, we'll help you. That's why God put us in your life. That's why God planted this church here. Can I just ask you to surrender all to him? Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, move us now. I thank you that these angels taught us glory to God in the highest Truly, there is none like you. And we are compelled today to bow our knee and to, and to seek your face and to surrender all to you. So would you help us as we sing this song and respond to this moment? That this wouldn't just be a flippant word off our mouths, out of our tongues. But it would be a moment that really speaks to our heart. May we live surrendered to you. And if there's somebody here today that needs you, may today be the day of their salvation. We love you. Move us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, to Jesus I surrender all. To him I freely give, and I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. And I surrender all, and I surrender
thankful that we got together and got to rejoice and celebrate this morning. I pray that uh, as we leave here, we will surrender our all on a daily basis, giving our all to him and seeing what he's going to do through us. One reminder, Christmas Eve day, night, uh, we have services at 2, 4, and 11 here and 6 o'clock at Calvary. Hope to see you there. Love you guys. You're dismissed.